Can you tell us a bit about yourself and why you wanted to come to this seminar? Okay. So, my name is Rachel Thompson. I'm a professor of childhood and youth studies at the University of Sussex, where I um, direct a, a centre on um, innovation and research in childhood and youth. And I wanted to come today because the very interested in um, the relationship between feminism and childhood studies. Um, it's, I guess, in some ways, all of my work has been um, over the years in relation to those terms in different ways. So I'm very interested in gender and social change, um, the role of feminism within the creation of childhood studies as a, as a field. Um, and uh, I was invited to, to write a paper. So I've written a paper with my colleague, um, Lisa Baretza from Birkbeck, which um, looks specifically at the relationship between childhood studies and maternal studies. And we both, um, both Lisa and I, um, are editors of a journal called Studies in the Maternal. So we've, our, our joint work um, is, on, is looking at mothers and, um, and, of course, mothers lead you to children. And we were really interested in the fact that there was very little conversation between those fields. So our paper is looking at the relationship and what maternal studies has got to learn from childhood studies and childhood studies has got to learn from maternal studies. Can you just tell me a little bit more about um, the idea of maternal studies um, and, and childhood studies you know, together and in, maybe in contradiction or against maternalism? Yeah. 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 Well, in a sense, a maternalism as a is very much um, as comes to stand for sort of taking to grant taking for granted ideas that there's something um, a natural affinity between um, mothers and children, um, uh, and that the work of um, childcare is the work of women um, and mothers, and that um, women, in a sense, know best around um, children. And it's a kind of key feature in the development of the welfare state, um, in much of, in many kind of colonial and post-colonial processes as well, and has been the sort of site of critique, um, certainly within childhood studies. Uh, you know, one of the things that childhood studies has tried to do is to, in a sense, detach the child, to think about, can we think of the child in its own terms, to have some kind of conceptual autonomy from the mother. Um, and uh, yeah, which has been a very important project. Part of what we are looking at is um, the complications of that. Uh, and we've looked at, uh, particularly one of the things we, we, we wanted to talk about was the way in which the figure of the child um, has become of great interest in a sort of new wave of maternal studies, which is really much more critical um, which is kind of influenced by queer theory, um, post-structural theory, um, but also psychoanalysis. So ways of thinking about the relationship between the, ch the child and the mother, but also the maternal and the, and the child as categories um, that are uh, exciting and help us think beyond the idea of the individual subject, really. So thinking about subjects as linked um, as being relational. So these are the issues that we explore in, in the paper. And, and there's something in your paper about conceptual autonomy. I think the, the two of you, I don't know if you arrived at the same conclusion, but mm -hmm. there's um, a discussion around conceptual autonomy and, and alterity of the child. Yeah. Um, so I suppose one of the um, assumptions of maternalism is that the child is, is known by the mother and the mother has privileged access to the child. And one of the things we're really interested in looking at is how the child can be a, um, an other, an unknown other for the, um, for the mother. And that both of them, in a sense, are involved in, in parallel projects which are in relationship but which are not determined by each other. 
So we talk about conceptual autonomy as being a fantasy, um, partly because you can't have the category um, or the, the term mother without child and vice versa. They kind of predicate not only sort of theoretically, but in terms of our history, they always get folded into each other, ideas of best interests. But um, so we seek, so we're drawn into seeking for, for autonomy. So feminism was drawn into the project of thinking about women without thinking about motherhood. So women as workers or women in the public sphere, the idea that the, the child holds back what it's possible to be a woman. And likewise, childhood studies thinks about the child in you know, trying to get rid of the idea of, of, of the parent, uh, of the mother. But we argue that that's also a fantasy, that you can disentangle them. So that we always have to struggle with that relationship empirically um, and, can, and theoretically. We have to always think about how they are in relation to one another, yet are not determined or necessarily even really known by the other. In, in, in the, the current context, because you gave an example of how you know the, the sort of commercialization of childhood or mm -hmm. commercialization of motherhood, too, um, or this sort of idea of motherhood, um, maybe transform the child into a project, mm -hmm. and how there was some, there could be some resistance from children. So I was wondering, you know, the, how this idea of conceptual autonomy. Um, yeah, well, it's, it's fitted into you know, this well, I think that it, it, it transforms both of the mother and the child into a project. I think it's, you know, I think it's, it's not simply, and that's one of the sort of, um, that's one of the things we find difficult to do is to actually understand both the mother and the child as being perhaps commercialised or materialised in, in different kinds of ways um, so that they are connected to wider processes and um, institutions. And they're both, in a sense, they're both in it together, um, and that we need to think, be able to think about them together, as well as about thinking of them as um, autonomous. And I think what we've tried to do is just to um, <sighs> encourage people to understand that that's a struggle, but not one that you can solve. So whenever we feel like we've done our job because we've separated them, then that's not the job. <laughs> so, you know, understanding this kind of um, fantasy of, 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 of conceptual autonomy is not about rejecting it, but it's about feeling comfortable with the struggle of understanding these as these connections as me as messy and um, difficult to escape. And first question: um, What are some of the key things or mm -hmm. issues that are emerging for you um, from this conversation? From discussion. Oh, right. Um, well, there's lots of really, it's difficult to um, think of it, anything other than the last thing I was uh, thinking about, but um, I guess one of the things that seems to be really important, well, the two things in a way are the, um, are coming out for me is really important, a, a time and space. So the specificity of um, childhood um, in different moments in time and in different places but also that these, these are connected in sort of global processes of, uh, of globalization, the ways in which um, places and relationships, intimate relationships are remade by sort of neoliberal um, uh, demands really on families and um, economies. So that's come through very well, but also that feminism is not an abstract project, it's a historical project. Um, and generations of feminists make deals, <laughs> possibly with the state, with the political system, um, and they make they they gain they achieve certain things. But then also time moves on. So we t we heard about um, in a sense you know first wave feminism and the establishment of the welfare state, which um, created a particular form of maternalism really embodied in the state, which in a way is being undone at the moment and keeping history and geography clearly in, in sight seems to be a very important theme of the conference. 